experiences. So this is where we can add a lot of different things. You can add work experiences, you can add extracurricular activities, and you can add school projects. We'll go through them one by one, right? So for work experiences, what are work experiences? If you've ever had full-time or part-time employment with a company, or you've done an internship or immersion, or you've done freelance work, that counts as work experience. So here's an example of work experience. Uh, this person was a finance intern as, at Invested, and this is what they did, right? So that's an example of work experience. When we list them down, we start with the position first before your position or role before the name of the company and then the relevant dates. Why do we put the position first? When we are, when we screen resumes, there's actually an eye tracking study that we really concentrate a lot on the left side of the page. So you want the things to jump out to your, uh, to the hiring manager or to the recruiter or whoever is reading your resume. You want the role, what you did to stand out first before the name of the company, right? So that's what matters more. So I really suggest that you start with your role first before the name of the company. I've seen um, resumes where it's the other way around, but the role matters more than the company that you did that thing for, right? Okay. So next we have extracurricular activities so if you played any roles in student organizations doesn't mean that you were an officer right you could it could be a project as well so even if you weren't like vice president or or secretary of the organization that's okay as long as you play the role in that student organization you can put that there and then if you have volunteer activities outside of school you can also put that under extracurricular activities so for this example this person wasn't an officer but was a website administrator of the college physics club right and then this person described what they did in that role so those are some of the, like an example of an extracurricular that's an example of an extracurricular activity that you can add doesn't have to be that you were an officer next you can see uh, next, you can add school projects. So a question I, I get a lot is like, what I what if I don't have work experience? And what if I don't have extracurricular activities? What do I add? Well, you went to school and I know you've done some significant projects for school. So you can add them as well, especially if it's a major project that allowed you to learn a new skill, right? It allowed you to learn a new skill. Um, or a skill that is relevant to the job, you can add that school project there. So here's an example of someone with school projects. So this, uh, this person made a business plan for a new venture for this class. So the way that you can list it down is like you can put the name of the project and then the name of the class that you did it for. And then you can add a description of what you did for that project. So for the business plan, you led the this person led a team of four in creating a business plan with this much capital. And the skill that they learned there is they built financial models using uh, four different scenarios using Microsoft Excel. And that's where they learned how to do a what-if analysis. Um, or another school project listed here is like they made the proposal for a community finance initiative for this class. And then this is what they did there, which is pitched a financial literacy program and then designed learning modules on cash flow management. So they listed down the knowledge topics that they were able to gain um, from that from that project, right? So the vampire, and you you normally not think that your school projects really mattered a lot, but if you don't have anything else to add and you did learn a new skill from that project, you can list it down in your resume. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how to add some quality descriptions. So like the descriptions that you've seen in bullets under under each project, each experience, each extracurricular activity, you can add descriptions to that so that um, it's not just the recruiter or hiring manager guessing what you did for that project um, or guessing what you did as a finance intern or guessing what you did um, as uh, as an officer, for example, in your school organization, you can list it down for them. So some guide questions that you can 
that you can use here to to fill that up is like number one, what tasks did you perform? What is it that you did for this project, for this experience, for this work experience, or for this extracurricular activity? What are the tasks? Break them down, right? Or another way that you can fill it up is ask what did you accomplish with those tasks, right? So for example, if you organized an event, how many people attended the event, right? And what are the things that you did when you were organizing the event? Instead of just saying, organized event attended by 200 people, what are the things that you did? Did you facilitate the discussion? Did you suggest a new way to register for the event? That sort of thing. Break down the different tasks that you did. Here are some additional tips for you. Uh, you can add a bulleted list instead of a paragraph format. So the bulleted list is preferred for readability more than the paragraph format. There's also research that supports this. Um, I just wasn't able to cite it right now. Um, and then if you have a job description already that you're targeting, align the tasks and accomplishments with the job description that you're targeting, right? If you if you have a target job already, align tasks and accomplishments that you're listing down with what's already in the job description. If you can, add details like metrics or numbers. So if, for example, um, in the school project that we listed a while ago, we put 75,000 pesos in capital was the, was the capital that you were working with when you were making a business plan, right, for a school project. That's the number that is relevant there because that means that you can create a budget for uh, an amount that big, right? So you want to show that. Or if, again, you organize an event and it was attended by 200 people, that means that you're capable of facilitating an event with 200 people um, in attendance, right? So it shows the um, extent of the work that you're able to do or the, the impact that you're able to create as well. Next is be specific with tasks. Again, like what I said, break them down. Instead of just saying organize, you can say uh, what are the different things that you did to organize an event? Who did you have to coordinate with? What are the what are the different things that you had to had to prepare, right? Break them down. What you can also do is add some context to your work. So instead of saying that you just made the business plan, what kind of business plan did you create? What was the impact you were trying to do with this business plan? Or, for example, a while ago, the, it was a proposal. You created the proposal for a class. What was the context of the proposal? What was it for? So you can add some more context into the work that you've done.